As we're coming up on the end of the year, do you want to find out a way to save taxes? You can probably do it right today, but you've got to do it before the end of the year. So if you want to find out more, stay tuned and pay attention and listen carefully. Hey, how are you doing today? Passive income time bringing another show this today. <clears throat> this one is not so much on passive income. Another great tip you need to find out and hear more about because if you're here in the U.S., I'm sure you want to find a way to pay less on your taxes because the tax man's coming for you. He's going to make you pay, you know, and you don't want to be involved with that. So I'm going to give you a couple tips right here and you can find out how to save some money to lower your tax bill on the upcoming year. First, let me just say I'm not a tax accountant. Nowhere at all. Nowhere in my name to ever take a class on accounting uh, taxes or anything like that. So what you need to do, I did a lot of research on my own, a lot of self-study. I paid for everything. You know, it's well worth it. You know, if you want to find out about tax, you've got to be a nerd and go and find out how to save some more money because it's going to, it's going to pay off in the end. All right. <clears throat> so first of all, I paid for, I went to Rob Kiyosaki class, you know, 2005 or six, and, you know, if you haven't read your Rich Dad Poor Dad, make sure you read Rich Dad Poor Dad because it's the foundation of what you need to do to be an entrepreneur and be an investor. It's, it's the foundation. I mean, it's, yes, there's, you know, Warren Buffett, all the other guys making money, you know, but you've got to find out the basics, you know, because he lays out the secret that you need to find out about. All right. So I attended a course, the Rob Kiyosaki class a seminar, um, over, you know, 2005 or six, I don't remember exact, exact date, but you know, I paid for the course. It was well worth it because I paid for it. I attended a seminar, you know, I paid more, some more money. To get the education out of it, you know, a lot of people say you know, avoid those things and it's like the plague, you know, you can lose your money. But these two things, you know, I paid a thousand dollars for this class. <laughs> I've made 10x, more than 10x out of that class because of that. Because I paid for these, learned this, you know, I, I was a nerd. So I sat there, listened to the DVDs, uh, CDs, excuse me, this is before DVDs, I think. <laughs> and then you really got to, I got to learn, you know, so much more about it and how to save some money. And because of that, you know, and, you know, first of all, when I paid for this, these were tax write-offs because I had a business and I got to write these off. You know, that's a, that's a little secret if you don't know. You can attend a financial class or some type of class and if it applies to something you're doing. You know, it could be investing. It could be if you're in real estate, you can just write that. Usually you can write that off, but verify with your tax accountant because like I said, I'm not a tax accountant and I can't really give you a qualified answer to make sure that's legitimate. So, all right. So I was in a, in a forum before, um, I believe it was Millionaire Fast Lane, and this other one lady in there, Diane Kennedy. I didn't know who she was, um, but she wrote these books. These books right here. All right, so you can see. It might come out backwards, but I'll try to fix it if I can. If not, <laughs> but just look up Diane Kennedy. She's written a lot. Of, she's a CPA. Um, was that in, I believe California or Arizona, and she's written a lot of great things about and really smart advice about how to save some money on taxes. More from the, more from a business perspective as well as an investor. So. Check her out, and um, but I happen to um, she also wrote this book. Uh, these two right here, under the uh, on the Robert Kiyosaki loop on Robert Kiyosaki brand on the Rich Dad Poor Dad brand. You know, she got to work with him, and you know, I got to work with her as well because she was my accountant for two years. So I learned some stuff from her during those two years because I just happened to be in the right place, right time, and I had to say, hey, you want to do my taxes for me? And she did them. You know, it worked out great. But my wife didn't like the long distance relationship thing with the because I had to send my taxes to her and then that's how the taxes were done. So but I got to learn some stuff from her. She made some little tips and you know I got to follow along and then apply to my taxes to make sure I was doing my taxes legitimately. Because one, I don't I've never paid I've never done my own taxes. Okay. I'm not that smart to do my own taxes. I gotta have someone else do it for me. I can find out, hey, this look at the deduction. Here, you, here's all the paperwork. You do it, you like you write down the claim for me and then you do all the paperwork, all the numbers and everything because I'm not going to do that. I don't have the time to do that because my tax returns, my, when I give it to my accountant, it's like that thick. It is really that thick, all right? Um, so I, I like to stack everything away. I put it in my, my folders, you know. <clears throat> I like to make copies of the receipts. So that's the first tip. So you, if you have a business expense, you can you can if you look, get the little receipts. It could be a, could be a lunch date, it could be a lunch visit with you know, it could be somebody you're dealing business with. You can write that off for the most part. If not if not all of it, you can write off a percentage of it. Like I said, I'm not an accountant, but you can write off part of that. But you've got to get that receipt, and a lot of times the receipt, if you wait you know six months to a year, it's gonna be all faded. So with that receipt, you've got to photocopy it, you know, and get a scanner and just scan it. 
and you have a copy of it. So when, it's, when you have that, have that hard print, it's not, that print is not going to fade, but your receipt is going to fade. So you've got to have that copy. You've got to have it, you know, it'll say, you know, went to eat at this restaurant with this person, you know, you paid for this price. So you might write on there, I ate with this person and we talked about this or that. And you can use that, give that to your accountant and say, hey, this is one of my, one of my deductions I'm going to claim this year. So like I said, do all the research, talk to your accountant, but you got to have a business to do a lot of these things. Um, the next thing I mentioned, a lot of these, a lot of books, you know, all these books I keep talking about, a lot of these I was able to write off for my real estate business because a lot of these I was able, able to apply to my real estate business. Um, some things you, you may or may not be able to do, so you've got to do the research, do the homework, but you've got to have a business. Investing is not so much a business unless you can put that into a structure and so you, you can claim that as a business. But if you're just an investor on your own, it's going to be hard to make that as make those claims and to write that off. So, okay, the next one you can do, you know, I'm sure you may have a lot of clothes you no longer need, no longer use. So, a lot of that you can take it to a Goodwill or something like a Savers or someplace like that, and a lot of that you can write it off. Okay, that's what I'm going to do this week before the end of the year. Take some of this stuff right here. A lot of these are all clothes, you know, outgrown, no longer used, no longer want to wear anymore. So a lot of these can be taken off and use that and write it off. Take it to Goodwill. And you're not going to get dollar for dollar on what you paid for it, but you will get a percentage off of it. There's, there's some little guide out there that shows how much you can write off for this or that. And you can use that to write it off on your taxes. So if you look around the house, see what you can use. You can give away a donation. Uh, use that to lower your tax bill because that's what you want to do. You want to use that to lower your tax bill and pay less to Uncle Sam because Uncle Sam... Uncle Sam doesn't care. He's going to take your money, all right? So do the best to find what you can to save, you know, find some old clothes you don't have anymore. Uh, other things, other you might have old utensils, uh, things in your kitchen you don't use anymore. You can take that to the Goodwill and donate that and use that. You can cut off a little bit off your tax bill for the next year, all right? So <clears throat> upcoming year, you can start this earlier because I think there's a four or $500 limit that you can use for turning stuff to a Goodwill and stuff like that. So you've got to start early. Unless you already have that money, already have enough set aside that you can donate that much this year. So you've got to do it. You've only got a couple more days to do that. All right. Don't waste. Don't play around. You know, Uncle Sam's going to come for you, but you've got to you got to be smarter than Uncle Sam. You've got to beat him at his own game. All right. You've got to beat him at his own game. It's all about winning. It's not about losing. <laughs> Every year when April fifteenth comes around, people are always complaining. You know, I see it on social media. They're saying that this and that. Complain. I got to pay all this in my taxes and everything. Sorry, my my camera's shaking. But I'm holding my hand. Um, I probably should have been using that, but either way. But hey, if you want to be, get smart, you got to be smart, than Uncle Sam. You've got to outthink Uncle Sam because Uncle Sam doesn't care. Uncle Sam's going to come and take his money. All right, he's going to take your money. And but you've got to be. But everything's laid out in the IRS rule book. You know, look it up online. IRS. Everything on IRS for taxes is online. Okay, it's online. You can look it up. You can Google it. You know, what can you use it right off for tax deductions for um, a home business? Uh, having a home office, that's another one right there. If you have a home office, a lot of that you can be written off on your taxes. Okay, a lot of that can be written off on your taxes. So you can buy furniture for that office. You can buy uh, the desk, computer, whatever. All, a lot of that you can write off on your taxes. A lot of it you can write off on your taxes. I, I keep saying that. I keep reiterating that. That's like, you know, the teacher stopping their feet, okay? You've got to listen, okay? Because you want to win in this game. You don't want to come out losing. You don't want to keep paying Uncle Sam all their all this money every year. You want to come out and win, all right? Okay, so everything for taxes, you know, you've got to keep good records of your information. You know, just like you go to an office, you see people have their whole filing cabinets, all this stuff. you got to do the same thing for your taxes. You've got to have... A file just for taxes. That's where I dumped a lot of my taxes in every year. You know, just receipts, different paperwork I get. I stick everything in that little filing cabinet. And then when the tax time comes around, I start preparing. Because for me, it takes me several times to sit everything, sit everything down, uh, scan stuff that I hadn't, that I hadn't done previously, uh, putting everything together, compiling it. So I can give to my accountant because it's a lot of stuff. I mean, for me, it's a lot of stuff. For you, it may not be a lot in the beginning. But over time, you start to learn more and find out more because... Like I said, you don't want to keep paying Uncle Sam all this money every year, okay? Uncle Sam doesn't care. Uncle Sam wants their money. But if you can find a way to write off some of that, Uncle Sam doesn't care. As long as it's legitimate, as long as your accountant verifies everything, you should be good to go, right? Um, but, you know, like I said, none of this is financial advice. None of this is tax advice, all right? Like I said, I'm not a tax accountant. But I hope you can 
get a lot of great information out of this. And so I let me know if you've ever done anything like this before, or if you have a business, you know, go and find out what you can. Uh, if you have a tax account, ask them, you know, what else can I do? Okay. I give you a lot of free tips right here and you should be able to apply it and lower your tax bill when April comes around next year. All right. If you have any comments, questions, leave them below. If you have any other tax tax tips, you know, leave them below, drop a comment below because somebody else may want to find out as well. All right. Like I said, if I can find a way to avoid the tax man, I will. All right. Hopefully the tax man is not watching this video. <laughs> if you haven't already, smash the like button, hit the bell for notification, and you know, check out this other video about more taxes I did earlier this year. You know, want to check it out. It's different information, great tips you can use. If you want to, pay, if you don't want to keep paying Uncle Sam money, find out what you need to do. All right. Take care. I'll see you again soon.